What's up and welcome back everybody. So today we got a pretty simple project. <clears throat> so nothing too crazy, at least not as crazy as it seems to some of y'all might think. So this is what we got going on. So as some of y'all might know if you saw the last uh, upload. Ugh. This thing was doing some weird stuff where when I was driving on my way to work, it was uh, like, um, I couldn't really find my fourth gear. It was like my reverse had gotten replaced by my fourth gear. So, and then I also noticed when I got under the car to start taking it apart, that we were pretty much leaking from everywhere. Um, but everywhere, I mean, like right here, this is basically the last thing that you put in once you finish assembling a transmission. That's, that thing is snugged really well. For whatever reason, it's still leaking. You can see all the oil running down here. And uh, I don't think these were leaking. Um, I think that was just runoff from this. And I don't know if the drain plug was leaking. That was snugged up pretty tight too. That could be a runoff from that also. Um, but regardless of the fact, we are going to be taking it apart. Oh, one thing that I did notice was when I was under the transmission, uh, these bolts right here, they have springs inside. They have detent springs. And what that does is it's got like a little, uh, it's got like a little ball in there. I'm not sure what material it is, probably like steel. It's like anodized and uh, they push against your uh, shift forks. So that's what puts pressure on your shift forks because if those weren't there, your shift forks would kind of move out of alignment and uh, you, you wouldn't be able to shift. But um, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna start taking this thing apart. I left my needle nose at Gabriel's. Um, I was over there this last weekend doing uh, wiring up this wide band for the car and you kind of need those to get into here and remove a c-clip that's in there so you can um pull the casing up off of the uh the stack that sits right here so i'm gonna see if i can get away with using these and a flathead um because i figured as long as you pry it open i might be able to get the flathead to pry it off the rest of the way if not then i'll just have to go to the store and get another set of uh of needle nose because gabriel lives pretty far from me i'm not driving all the way over there to get them things back but uh so let me get started on cracking this thing open i'll show you guys how to open this um once i get that c-clip undone i'll go ahead and walk you guys through the process i'll explain you exactly what it is that i did and then i'll show you how this casing comes off um there's a ton of videos on how to do this online but you know one more isn't gonna hurt so let's go all right guys so the first thing that i noticed is while taking one of these detent screws out one of them didn't want to come out and when i did get it out it looks like this and that's not good that might actually be my problem right there so but we're gonna go ahead and take the casing off anyways and uh clean everything up and put everything back together i am gonna put my type r diff back in here so i can be lsd again but yeah that's not normal luckily i got more of these inside um and honestly i'm hoping that that's the problem i'm hoping the shifting mechanism didn't actually move like i'm suspecting see this is how it's supposed to look see how the edge isn't all flared up and you got the uh the spring sitting right there the little detent ball sitting inside here that's what it's supposed to be like that right there that's not good that's not doing anything and these are if you can see one's on this side one's on this side they're ones for each fork so this which is where fourth was that was the bad one so I'm pretty sure that that right there is gonna be my problem. Make sure that before you start prying off the casing, you get those out, your Deaton springs. And then on the top here, you're gonna have the screw that's holding your reverse mechanism in. If you don't take any of these out, when you start pricing up on this, when you start prying up on the casing, you're gonna make one hell of a mess. All right, so surprisingly, maybe it's because uh, that's what they're made for. 
but these actually worked out a lot better than using the uh, the pliers. So I don't know how well you can see in there, but if you see, there's like a little clip right here. So that clip holds onto this bearing here. There's a little groove that it sits in. And when that's grabbing onto it and you try to pull this casing up, it tries to pull the whole stack with it and it's not gonna come with it. So you gotta undo that and then just kind of pry it up. That way when you pull the casing, it'll actually separate and leave the stacks in there. Everything in the top casing looks good. This race right here, we had just replaced it. If you watched the Deserland video, it's my first video I ever uploaded. Um, this race actually got replaced, but it's in really good condition. That's fine. And then the reason that my diff broke and I need new bearings is because the last person to uh, um, mess with the transmission, they didn't have that shim up there. So we went ahead and put that shim in there also from a different transmission that I have. And that's doing really good. So. Our diff and everything here looks fine. Um, as far as I can see, everything looks good. Bearings look good. Everything looks like it's in really good condition. Um, so this is what's gonna be coming out. You see how these bearings are tapered? So I have a kit in there where we're basically gonna put like a bearing like this, a roller bearing on it, and it comes with a custom shim. So we're gonna have to check clearance when we're done. But. I'll try my best to show you guys how that's done because I'm not a transmission expert. I take really good pride in like the way I build my motors and stuff, but transmissions, uh, I'm not the expert. Now, this is what I was talking about when I was saying that there was only two bolts on the shifter mechanism. So I was wondering if these two bolts here had backed out because that one that's in there is broken in there. So. Last time when I got my transmission, I had sent it in to get that fixed. And the person told me that it should be fine with just the two bolts. Um, he closed it up. I used it for a little while and the transmission never really gave me any issues. Well, when I first got it back, those two bolts were loose. I couldn't go into gears doing the exact same thing it's doing now. I opened it up. These two bolts were loose, but they're still tight. So that's not an issue. So he wasn't wrong. I guess you could get away with the two bolts in there, at least for a while. Um... I mean, they're still not loose. This thing is working exactly how it needs to work. And actually, nope, I'm lying. See how that's moving? Yep, so that is definitely a problem. Yep, here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Well, this bolt actually got stretched out. That's what happened. You see that? You see how it's really thick at the end and then the neck right there is really thin? So it got stretched out. And this one here, that one isn't even bottomed out. So the whole time this thing was just sitting on that one bolt. Well, that's all my fault. That's, uh, that's me being an idiot. So don't do that. These are good. So what we're gonna do here is uh, I'm gonna take this out. These stacks and everything gotta come out. I need to take, well, I'm not taking that diff. That open diff is staying just like that. Um, those bearings are actually brand new on it. So I'm putting that diff away for a rainy day. And then I got another diff outside that I need to put the, uh, the roller bearings on and that diff is gonna go in here. So, and then we're gonna go ahead and piece this thing back together. But uh, yeah, so let's start tearing this thing apart and uh, cleaning everything up really good. Normally I, uh, I take this all off as like one assembly because it kind of sits in there like that. But in this case, because this is so loose, I, it just literally came right out. So I'm gonna undo.
the last 10 here, which the reason this thing is moving is because this 10 wasn't bottomed out. Take this 10 out. Okay, so when I do have my electric ratchet, but my electric ratchet broke and uh, I'm not really trying to go get a, a new one right now. kind of rough to take out. I'm gonna have to run like taps through all of these and then um, I'm gonna have to get the proper bolts for it. Uh, this one's not stretched out, this one's fine. It just didn't, I don't know if you can see that, but it's fine, there's no stretch on this one, no visible stretch anyways like that other one. This one looks perfectly fine, but it just didn't, wasn't reaching the bottom. So that's why that thing was still moving. Let me see. So yeah, so once you get all those out, this will come right out. And then the next thing you gotta do is you gotta take off these two bolts right here. Um, that's gonna be for your reverse. Once you got those out, you can go ahead and remove your reverse selector, put that off to the side, and then back here, it's kind of hard to see, but you literally just pull up on the uh, on the shaft. What I like to do, I just like to wiggle up the shaft, and then your whole reverse gear and the shaft will come out. And don't worry, you have a little dowel pin right there, so this thing can only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about whether it goes in there or not. And then if you remember saying me saying something about that uh, bolt that you got to take out from the casing, that bolt goes right into that hole there. Basically just to hold this from moving. All right, and now comes the uh, the fun part. So, let's see, get this out of the way here. I'm gonna move this casing over. And, uh, slide this guy over this way a little bit and the next part is going to be to remove the stacks so what I like to do you just need to kind of just come over here and just grab a handful and just kind of pull up and the stack will come off with the forks like that and you can just go ahead and set them down As I can see, there's nothing wrong with the synchros. This transmission wasn't grinding or anything. There wasn't really any issues with anything getting into gear. And I'm not really seeing any kind of wear at all. Um, so we're not gonna, really gonna touch these stacks. What we are gonna do, um, well, first thing, just make a mental note too. When you get to that shaft right there, which is uh, basically the shaft that goes out of your transmission. Make note that you're gonna have two washers there. That was another problem I was having with another transmission that I had somebody else build me. You need to have two washers. One's gonna be thicker and flat. The other one, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's got a bit of a bend. That's gonna be your rebound. You need to make sure that that curve is pointed up. Make sure that you have those in here. If not, you're gonna have issues with whining noises and all types of weird stuff. Your transmission isn't gonna work uh, properly. So make sure that that's there. And then the last thing is gonna be the diff, which the diff, you literally just grab onto it, pull it out, and there's your diff right there. So. And that's basically it. The only other thing that you could do is you could take out the bearings, which this one, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. So this one's just got that bolt right there. Um, just 
got that bolt right there. You take out that bolt, that bearing slides out. I like to pull this out and clean it because usually if you have any kind of damage, you end up with a ton of gunk in here. And uh, this one literally just slides out. You can usually put a flathead or something in there and you can just kind of walk it up. Don't pry it. It'll just kind of walk out with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then obviously there's your speed sensor. And then you have your selector here, which if you take this bolt out and this bolt out, the shaft will come out and this guy stays in here. You can pull that out afterwards. But we're not going in any further than this. Um, because like I said, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and upgrade the bearings on this diff. And then everything is gonna get reassembled. And uh, I need to find a new one of these guys, which I should have some spares inside. We're gonna replace this guy. And uh, we're gonna try to get this broken bolt out of here. And we're gonna try to get two good sized bolts for these two holes here. And we're gonna put some red Loctite on them. And uh, after that, we should be good to go. And I can't wait to be LSD again. There is nothing like it.